And on Capitol Hill, a group of Republican senators gearing up to challenge the results of the 2020 presidential election. You're watching Outnumbered Overtime. I'm Harris Faulkner. Twelve Republican senators now say they will object to the results when Congress meets on Wednesday to certify the Electoral College vote. Both Democrats and some Republicans are fiercely criticizing that move. But Senator Ted Cruz of Texas says the backlash is overblown. I think everyone needs to calm down. I, I think we need to tone down the rhetoric. This is already a, a volatile situation. It's like a tinderbox and, and, and throwing, thr throwing lit matches into it. When I released my statement with, with 10 other senators, I had multiple, uh, multiple Democrats uh, s urging that, that, that I should be arrested and tried for the crimes of sedition and treason. Now, now look, that's not helpful. And in fact, part of that list that Senator Cruz was talking about includes Oklahoma Senator James Lankford, who's with me now, one of the group who will object to the electoral vote on Wednesday. Uh, Senator Lankford, thank you for being on the program. I'm sure you could just hear Vice President Pence, and he has said he is on board with all of you and agrees that that objection or objections should be made. Your, first of all, just your reaction to that. Well, let me say, first of all, my reaction to Mike Pence's speech was a remarkable speech, both to challenge people in Georgia to show up and vote, but he slipped into pastoral mode uh, to say to them, hey, we believe in a God who is in control of things and see things bigger than we do. And so no matter how this all turns out, we're going to trust God in the process. And he called on people to be able to pray and to be able to come together. So uh, he, he went from rally to pastor mode pretty rapidly and did a really remarkable job of just challenging people to say, let's pray, let's vote, and then let's leave the results up to God as we go from there. As far as what we're trying to do, that n none of us are trying to uh, overthrow an election. We're trying to say, hey, there are still lots of questions from millions of people out there, and we think those questions need to be answered. So we're asking for a pause, give it 10 days, pull a commission together mm -hmm. quickly, like what was done in 1877 when there were three states challenged then, pull this 15-member commission together, give them 10 days to be able to pull the results back, then give it back to the states. The two things that are certain in the Constitution and the law, we have to have an inauguration on the 20th of January, and the states have to make the decision on how they send for electors. That's not Congress's job. That is the state's job. But we do think there's information that has not been addressed, and we think we should pause and be able to address that because these issues are not going away. And for the sake of the country coming together at the end of the election, let's address these issues now. I, I want to bring this in. Republican Congressman Ken Buck says it's unconstitutional for Congress to object to the Electoral College, basically going against what you just said. Let's watch and I'll get your reaction. Sure. The Twelfth Amendment says that uh, on the 6th, the vice president will open an envelope and Congress will count the votes. Our job is not to supersede the judgment of the states. Our job is to count votes. And when we decide that we want to supersede the judgment of the states, be careful, because the next Republican president that gets elected with a Democrat House and Democrat uh, Senate uh, will be under the uh, uh, unfortunate precedent of uh, Democrats being able to reverse that election. Senator Lankford, are Republicans who join you on this objection on Wednesday taking heed to that caution that you just heard? Absolutely. As Ken Buck's not wrong in this. The Constitution does require the vice president to be able to open the envelopes and for a count to be done in the president, presence of the House and the Senate. Uh, but the law also gives the ability for Congress to be able to challenge any elector uh, to be able to say, hey, were they regularly given? Uh, that was done in 1969 over a faithless elector. 33 senators joined that. Our republic survived. There was great debate about faithless electors. And quite frankly, a lot's been done about faithless electors since that time period. There have been a lot of changes in the law to be able to make sure that's right. In 2005, Senator Barbara Boxer joined with some House uh, Democrats as well to be able to challenge some of the results in Ohio and mm -hmm. said there's not enough voting locations in minority urban areas uh, that they're disproportionately blocked out, where they have long lines in minority areas and they don't in other areas. Many states paid attention to that. They made changes. We're challenging in the exact same way that was done in 2005 and in 1969 and saying, can't everyone see the issues that are out there with the election? We're not trying to overturn an election. We're challenging it and trying to wake America up and to say to the people that are saying, there are no problems here, move on. There are problems with the election, and let's work to be able to actually resolve these. And if there are unanswered questions, let's get them resolved before January the 20th, because the worst case scenario for the country is the truth comes out on April the 2nd. 
that's our worst case scenario, uh, where long after inauguration is done, truth starts bubbling out and everyone says, oh, now what? So we're just challenging for a commission mm. to say, let's deal with unanswered questions. We're not trying to break from any kind of constitutional precedent or things that have been done in the past. But we are trying to say, mm. honor the people who still have questions, and there are millions of them. Let's get those questions answered for the sake of unity in the country. Well, quickly, and, and it's got to be quick because I know you've got to go back. I, I'm just curious, as you're having all of this happen right around the time of the Georgia Senate runoffs, are you worried at all? Because you heard Vice President Pence telling people to go vote, you know, don't just sit home. Are you, are you concerned at all that all of this discourages people from believing in the process in the first place in that state? Yeah, there's been plenty to discourage people already uh, through the process uh, over the past several months. And it's not just been the past several months. It's been months and months as we walk through the pandemic and states have changed rules and there's been things that have been altered in the process that people begin to be unsettled about the election because things aren't normal mm -hmm. right now, to say the least. And there have been lots of questions that have been raised. My encouragement to people of Georgia is go vote, go show up. Uh, there's a lot of people right. paying attention to this, as the vice president mentioned. There are a lot of people watching. Go vote. Senator Lankford, thank you for taking the time today. Important day as we get ready for a Tuesday and Wednesday that will be quite historical. History making. Good to see you. Thank you.